So our next speaker is uh, uh, Professor Ivan Todorov from Sofia, and uh, was mentioned several times in uh, Gerhard Mack's talk. Uh, so he will uh, speak about uh, the Lure. The Lure of conformal symmetry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. So I was asked uh, before the talk by Val uh, whether uh, I expect that our, my talk will correlate. Uh, I think uh, uh, it will not in the usual sense. It will uh, uh, at most contribute to demonstrate that the many fa there are many faces of conformal symmetry, and uh, this conference should somehow give the uh, different faces of the conformal symmetry. Uh, the title I gave, uh, I mean, gave me freedom to choose the last moment what I will be talking about, but uh, if uh, it sounds like making propaganda for the conformal symmetry, and uh, then uh, in the canonical thing would have been to start with the fact that uh, Bateman and Cunningham back in uh, 1909 uh, applied conformal invariance to, quantum, to classical electrodynamics, uh, that Herman Weil in uh, 1918 uh, in uh, first the uh, early attempt to construct a unified uh, unification of gravity and uh, electromagnetism introduced uh, what is called Weil symmetry, which is in fact uh, an extension of conformal symmetry. I, I will uh, then go on with Dirac. Uh, 36 mentioned by uh, Gerhard. Uh, I'm choosing instead a uh, somewhat private uh, thing, uh, that is the, the way I st started getting interested in the conformal uh, group, or Lie algebra actually, and uh, uh, about our early work with Gerhard of uh, 68, which uh, he mentioned in the beginning of uh, his talk. So, uh, if you read, there are excellent recollections of Dirac in his later years. Uh, he says that uh, when inventing his famous equation, he was just playing with matrices. And uh, playing with matrices, including Clifford algebras, I think is a, a useful game, not only entertaining. And uh, that is, in effect, the way I uh, first somewhat unexpectedly uh, came to the conformal group. You have uh, invariant form for the Dirac equation. Psi tilde is psi star beta, uh, a matrix with two eigenvalues plus and two minus, so trace beta zero. And uh, you know that gamma mu emission conjugate beta plus beta gamma mu is zero. That's when gamma mu are generators of Clifford 3-1. Some people 
think that it, uh, the signature doesn't matter. It does. Uh, Clifford 3 1 is uh, equivalent to 4 by 4 real matrices, while mm, Clifford 1 3 is something completely different. Here, here we see why we have Majorana spinners in Minkowski space. Clifford 1, 3 instead is isomorphic to 2 by 2 matrices with quaternionic uh, entries, something different, more related. Uh, but still, uh, the question arises, what is the general uh, matrices satisfying such property? You find that the commutator of gamma mu, as a consequence of this, also satisfies beta gamma mu nu equal to zero, uh, but then it stops. Uh, in Clifford 3.1, the other matrices, including the product of gamma zero to gamma three, uh, doesn't satisfy this uh, relation. So what you get is the Lie algebra SO3.2 which is uh, isomorphic to the symplectic real algebra in four dimension. Some people write here the rank of the group that would be SP2R. I use the dimension of the matrices of the lowest order representation. But if you introduce a gamma 5, this metric is anti-hermitian. But if you introduce a gamma 5, which is Hermitian, and which anti-commutes with gamma 0 to gamma 3, you generate, in fact, Clifford 4-1. I haven't seen or mentioned that it is Clifford 4-1, which includes the Lie algebra u to 2 of the cover of the conformal group extended by helicity. And this, as a Clifford algebra, is isomorphic to all the complex 4 by 4 matrices. And there, u to 2 is precisely the set of matrices, that is the Lie algebra, is the set of matrices uh, which satisfy the above relation, x star beta plus beta x zero. So, okay, uh, it, when you first study uh, Dirac equation in gamma matrices, you, they don't tell you about the conformal group. Dirac equation with the mass is nothing, is not even uh, dilation invariant. But uh, in effect, when you play with the gamma matrices and you use the correct gamma 5, uh, which is used in the B minus A and everywhere, <coughs> you get the conformal the algebra. Now, you could say you get something very unphysical, uh, a semi-simple, non-compact uh, group uh, doesn't have unitary finite dimensional representation. So this, uh, the representations of uh, this Lie mm, algebra are, okay, uh, something uh, 
uh, which you could uh, enjoy playing, but uh, not much to do with physics. We expect physics to be related to massless particles, at least, because they are obviously dilation invariant if you have three massless particles. So uh, there should play a role a representation, perhaps, of the conformal group. If we find appropriate positive energy representation. And uh, on the other hand, we were educated, as uh, Gerhard uh, had uh, reminded us, uh, by Eugene Wigner, who in 1939 had proven that all particles, massive or massless, are described by irreducible representations of the Poincaré group. No need for uh, such extension. And that looked even strange that uh, <coughs> the conformal group should uh, play a role. It's a much bigger group, 15 parameters. Uh, the other is 10. Uh, normally, you expect to have direct integral of irreducible representations of Poincaré entering a single representation of the conformal group. But Gerhard and I looked at a construction which now seems, uh, I mean, it, it did seem soon afterwards as a very natural thing to do, uh, if you think of it. Uh, it's, you, if you postulate that I write in phi, not psi, because we are accustomed to think of a Fermi field as anti-commuting, but if we take a four-component object which satisfy the both canonical commutation relations, Alpha beta is delta alpha beta. Then you obtain an infinite dimensional representation of the conformal the algebra by introducing to each matrix e x an operator x okay, equal to phi x phi tilde x phi. The point is that if you take the commutator that preserves that is the commutator of x and y is phi tilde commutator of x and y phi. And that is uh, what uh, came to be known as the ladder representation of the uh, conformal group. So uh, Gerhard and I said to demonstrate that the latter representation of the conformal group has a strange uh, degeneracy minimality property uh, that it stays irreducible when restricted to the Poincaré subgroup. And, well, it worked that way, uh, and it later uh, became part of a sophisticated <coughs> general mathematical theory, uh, which said uh, about minimal representations, Joseph's ideal and all that gave meaning with the representation we got was before all this uh, scientific development. What uh, happens here is that uh, when you take the ladder, you uh, can have uh, in finite dimension, uh, every representation practically has both a lowest weight and the highest weight vector. In infinite dimension, 
maybe neither. But uh, there are precisely one uh, representation for each helisti which has uh, bounded below energy, and this is the lowest weight, positive energy representation, and one which has bounded below, uh, bounded above energy, negative energy solution. We know that to get a field, a local field, we need both. Uh, Dirac had a hard time to invent the sea of neg field ener negative energy state to get uh, correct interpretation of the negative energy. Nowadays, we do it sort of in a simpler way. But if you, we introduce the standard Chevalier-Cartan basis of raising and lowering cooperator. In this formalism, this is phi tilde <coughs> sub i, phi i plus 1, phi taking value 1, 2, 3. It's uh, when we speak of SU22, it's rank 3 group, the force for covering of the uh, conformal group, and if I, the lowering operators, equal what is the Dirac conjugate, phi i plus 1 tilde phi i, then you can define the vacuum as something which is killed by the loading operator. And that will be our usual positive energy vacuum. We, with Gerhard, uh, were going another way. We didn't use the canonical Chevalier basis. We constructed the right physical positive energy vacuum and near the end of the game realize that that's not enough to have a zero mass field. You need also the negative energy solutions and they are there in Wigner's classifications as well. You have, you, you may use positive energy solution but you, you have both. And then uh, we had to invent the procedure to uh, define another vacuum. So our definition, because we didn't use the I was that if you take the projection 1 plus beta over 2 times phi acting on the vacuum, that should uh, give zero and then it is the same uh, phi tilde, well, 1 minus beta over 2 phi tilde acting on the vacuum is also 0. So in a beta diagonal basis, in a Dirac basis, you know, the other one is chiral when gamma phi is diagonal, you would have a beta diagonal you would just have to write phi, the spot component speeder, as two, two components, creation and annihilation operator spinners, A and beta in B star, and then phi tilde will be A star minus B. So the canonical commutation relations will be satisfied. Now, OK, you say we have proven uh, that uh, this funny-looking uh, P 
pleasant to physicists who are accustomed after Dirac, Saint Dirac in 27, introduced for the first time creation and annihilation operators to describe photons, absorb, it, he called them properly, absorption and emission operators, and uh, that was the birth of quantum electrodynamics. Uh, since then, I mean, we believe that we are born with uh, creation and annihilation operators and uh, their box space representation. But <coughs> the question is, did we gain really something if we know that uh, the conformal group, a b much bigger group, is the symmetry of zero mass particle. And uh, we indeed uh, gain, and I will illustrate this in um, several facets of the story. First of all, having the conformal group you have a natural compactification of Minkowski space. The conformally compactified Minkowski space, you yeah, have mentioned it is isomorphic to S3 cross S1 over Z2 identification of opposite point, that's three sphere times the circle with identified opposite point. It doesn't look very causal because time seems to be compact, but uh, Gerhard reminded us that the universal cover of this Minkowski space is an infinite cylinder and then you can have global causality relation, but uh, I think it is important that matters that you have always uh, local in a small neighborhood causal ordering and moreover uh, this gives you a natural way to get rid uh, of infrared problems because you don't have infinite volume uh, problem. You uh, have a, a, a nice compactification of space time. And furthermore, you the conjugate operators to this natural uh, geometric compact object are operators with discrete spectrum. So you have uh, what uh, we are accustomed to tell students in uh, first uh, year quantum mechanics that is quantized, that you have uh, energy quanta, but it, it isn't in usually because the energy operator has a continuous spectrum. But here you do have an operator which has a discrete the integer the space spectrum that's the conformal Hamiltonian. The conformal Hamiltonian is not quite the usual Hamiltonian. I think Irving Siegel I uh, liked it very much, and he preceded us in using the conformal Hamiltonian. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, roughly speaking, one half, he figured it differently, the Poincaré energy operator plus the generator of special conformal transformation. And what is nice with this operator having a discrete spectrum is that if you impose the physical property of P naught 
to have positive spectrum, that energy is positive, then K0, which can be written as a while transformation, while have done many things, so it's a bit confusing to use, but there is a proper, actually, without reflection, uh, while uh, inversion, let's say, which maps uh, translations into special conformal transformations. So if you know that P0 is positive, K0 is also positive operator, and the sum is again a positive operator. But here, uh, in this picture, it has a natural uh, group theoretical meaning. The maximal compact subgroup of this group, as you do, is the group U S of U2 cross U2. That is the group of product of uh, unitary matrices with overall determinant equal to 1. And this group is not simple. It has a U1, so we have a U1 central subalgebra, which, uh, I don't know, which is the center of the maximal compact subgroup. And if we inter continue, if you are better accustomed to it, I introduced the Chevalier generators of the simple raising and lowering operators, but they allow you to define a, cart a Cartan basis like EI commutator with <coughs> FI, and if you, which is nothing but phi i tilde phi i minus phi i plus one tilde phi i plus one. And then you have to work a little bit and you show that the central, so to speak, Newtonian is actually h1 plus 2h2 plus h3. And that, in the creation and annihilation operator basis, is a star a, two component spinners, plus bb star. The helicity is minus this, uh, the twice helicity. But here you get plus. So you get, uh, obviously, positive operator here and also obviously having uh, integer spectrum when you express it in terms of uh, creation and annihilation operators. So <coughs> what is the gain of uh, this? Well, uh, we learned uh, in the time being, uh, I think uh, Jean Bernard is going to remind us that uh, there is a characteristic of quantum field theory, which people mostly used in statistical mechanics, called the partition function. Uh, so uh, the part here we can introduce if we have a Hamiltonian, which happens to have communication générale. La direction vous attend que le CERN. find the partition function as something 
uh, which will write like q to the power h, where q is e to the 2 pi i tau. And tau, uh, if you uh, like to be modern mathematician, is a modular parameter uh, which uh, belongs to the upper half plane. Imaginary tau is positive. And if you come from statistical mechanics, you say that 2 pi times the imaginary part of tau is actually h nu Planck's come here over kt. It is uh, the inverse temperature and anticipating uh, Planck, you have to have a dimensionless parameter h nu. But then it's good to write trace. So trace is taken over the Fock space here in general over the Hilbert space of the theory, you said that you have a discrete spectrum of part, uh, Hamiltonian with integer eigenvalues. You have an exponential which at the end of the day has a decreasing part because uh, imaginary part of tau is positive and you have another i. So you have the standard getting formula for uh, minus the exponential of the energy over uh, with the Boltzmann factor. But uh, what is better, we can actually, it's a little formal to, to write a trace of an uh, operator, but uh, what happens is that we can, with little work, calculate the degeneracy of, uh, we know how each eigenvalue, uh, what is the de degeneracy of each eigenvalue of the energy. So let me start being more specific. Uh, let me take that uh, will be uh, that just for the sake of simplicity, uh, the case of zero helicity. That is uh, what will be the case of a scalar zero mass field at the end. So a scalar zero mass field, I will imagine as in, in our discrete basis as something of this type. So we'll have a creation part and an annihilation part, A of C and A of C. Well, it's not, I will write the creation part and uh, write it F plus of Z, because otherwise it becomes plus F minus, and I will spell out what is the creation part. It is a sum over operator amplitude times what comes about here is we have we can introduce in our compactified Minkowski space it's S three times S one 
we can introduce a basis of variable z of the following form, e to the 2 pi i <coughs> t, a real parameter, times u alpha. And u alpha is a Euclidean for vec unit for vector. So u, u square, which is u three-dimensional square plus u four square, is one. So u parameterizes the three sphere, S3, T parameterizes the circle of unit length. And you even see that when T is one half, so the exponent is minus one, and Q is replaced by minus one, the two minuses cancel, so this is really a parameterization of the uh, compactified Minkowski space. We divide by Z2. Z2 doesn't influence the parameters. And what happens is that here it is uh, an expansion in homogeneous polynomials of Z. And uh, these are harmonic polynomials in Z. Uh, why? Because the two-point function uh, phi z1, phi z2, vacuum expectation value, is what you expect to be for a massless particles, in spite of the unusual choice of coordinates, 1 over z1 minus z2 squared. And this is convergent for absolute value. It, it's convergent not on the physical region. Then you have distributions. We are taught by Whiteman, but analytically continued for Z2, smaller in absolute value than Z1, what corresponds to the upper cap plane in Minkowski space. And this function happens if you dif apply the Laplacian, the four-dimensional Laplacian in Z2, that is away from the pole, otherwise it's a green function, you get zero. So each term will give just uh, harmonic polynomials. And you can count the number of uh, homogeneous harmonic polynomials in four dimensions. It depends on the dimension of spent time. And in four dimensions, it is n squared. I mean, this is uh, for those who haven't forgotten the course of quantum mechanics with the example of hydrogen atom. Uh, it confirms what Gerhard was telling us, namely that the solution is not much different than the uh, hydrogen atom. You have uh, at each level the degeneracy exactly equal to n squared. So you can therefore write your an explicit expression for your partition function in this particular case. If we take the zero helicity here, uh, it is the product in n from 1 to infinity of of 1 minus q to the n to the power n square. And knowing uh, the partition function, it's not uh, just an ornament. This, uh, at this point, 
I am telling you about a work we had done in 2004 with Nikolai Nikolov of our group. So it's uh, already uh, our work with Gerhardt is in, um, in the prehistoric era when there was no archive, electronic archive. So it's only published in the Journal of Mathematical Physics. And until now, I, for my shame and the other, I don't have a free access uh, to my article. <laughs> so, <laughs> and since uh, the Trieste Institute was not the richest one, it didn't supply us with, didn't pay the fee and didn't supply us with 50 copies of the, uh, so I have when I have a Xerox around to make Xerox copies of this article. But uh, what we have with uh, uh, Nikolai Nikolov is better. You can just click. It is hefty H. Uh, zero four. Zero three. One ninety one. And uh, we can go a little further. Uh, what uh, you really need is the expectation value of the energy. So we are interested in the temperature, expectation value at non-zero temperature. And my temperature parameter is this Q, which is the Boltzmann factor and the temperature. And this uh, happens to be uh, theta value of minus 3, something like that. It's 1 minus 2n for 2n dimension. Uh, it, it is, let me uh, write it scientifically, it is the modular form G4 of tau. Now, mm, mathematicians like this uh, objects very much. Uh, that means that G4 of uh, an SL2Z transformation of tau, A tau plus B over C tau plus D, divided by C tau plus D, I think, to the power of the weight here, is G4 of tau. Now, why a mathematician like this? Uh, one reason is uh, it's, uh, it's such invariants are rare. So you, this property is not satisfied for, well, for weight smaller than 4. And for weight 4, you have just one function of to normalization which satisfies this property. And uh, this one function is a constant which you can write as a Bernoulli number or because of the existing identity of the value of the uh, zeta function at negative argument uh, plus some and uh, 1 to infinity q to the n n times q, uh, q to the n of uh, 1 minus q to the n power n squared. 
the point is that yeah I think anyway I might have made a mistake here but so let me uh, we, we have the partition function but this is a correct formula and uh, in fact it is obtained from the partition function this thing as q d t q times z of q well uh, why uh, should we enjoy this do you recognize these terms? I mean, in fact, uh, what you have here is indeed Planck's formula for the black body radiation. Because you have the exponent here, and to 1 minus the negative exponent in the denominator. I think this is a most elegant way of obtaining uh, Planck's black body radiation formula and uh, showing its relation to uh, modern mathematics. And in fact, the reason physicists would like a formula of this type in mathematicians like it is the same because when you expand in Fourier it means in powers of Q you have integer coefficients and this is gives interesting information for number theorists and it gives uh, I mean, degeneracy levels and uh, multiplicities from the point of view of physics in quantum physics. So, uh, you, I think I uh, had nearly exhausted my time, or maybe even uh, over exhausted it, but uh, I uh, said only very simple things uh, concerning free zero mass particles. I might have had it, I missed to, to say only one thing which makes a connection to twister theory and twister representations. Uh, you, if you take a representation in which gamma 5 is diagonal, you uh, can get, uh, you can write then in a gamma 5 diagonal basis, phi as uh, 2 spin or lambda call it, and uh, mi minus, or call it lambda bar, and here uh, d, which is d d lambda, here, and then you, you find an expression for the four momentum which is uh, gamma mu 1 plus gamma 5 over 2 uh, expectation value between the phi's and in, in this notation it comes down to lambda sigma mu lambda bar and where lambda and lambda bar are two component spinners. And you know, I mean, from the big science of twister theory or from the uh, identity that uh, sigma naught cross sigma naught minus sigma three-dimensional cross sigma three-dimensional uh, gives twice epsilon the two-dimensional anti-symmetric tensor AB epsilon 
a dot b dot and a b multiplies lambda a lambda b a dot b dot lambda dot and lambda uh, b dot and when you have anti-symmetric vector with a uh, tensor with the same vector you get zero so we have for free that this is masses particle and that you you have a on shell parameterization of massless uh, particles by two component spinners which give the ein. so you see that the game which started with uh, matrices and ended up with massless particles and seem to have uh, other, little other overlap except for side remarks with uh, Gerhard's talk but this lead us to a nice object which sometimes have a very uh, down to earth uh, physical meaning and the beginning of quantum theory was the Planck radiation formula. So, thank you. So, so I have a question. Yes. Uh, Ivan, so you you reminded us that uh, there is this relation between the hydrogen atom spectrum and yeah and and the uh, and the spectrum that you get from the conformal yeah the the, <coughs> the generous here were free massless yeah, free field mass the, uh, the energy levels. So if you now take uh, massless fields with non-zero helicity, yes. are there some quantum mechanical Hamiltonians that will um, realize yeah. the, that spectrum as well? Yes, we, we have written the, uh, for the biofield and for the uh, photon field the formula. It's a combination then of uh, modular functions uh, for the zero helicity case is the simplest uh, thing for the uh, then there you have a mixture of uh, G6 you you know how they developed uh, <coughs> no, but my question was different and of course you can derive the partition function that I understand but is yeah. there a, can you find a quantum mechanical system like uh, an like analog of hydrogen, hydrogen atom, atom, which would realize that spectrum uh, for other no. for other fields. No, uh, I, I don't know uh, uh, such a simple system uh, for for uh, uh, the other field. I know that uh, there is a guy, I think Meng, of uh, Hong Kong, who is uh, devoting his life on. Uh, but uh, to, to problems of this type, <laughs> he relates them to uh, Jordan algebra actually also. And, uh, but he always plays with the generalization of the hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom with a, a slightly different Hamiltonian mixture of oscillator. So, a honest physical system which we uh, didn't invent specially to illustrate the power uh, but which we knew was the basis the basic physical example in quantum mechanics this I have not uh, encountered okay. Okay. any other questions 
Okay, well, uh, thanks a lot, Ivan. Uh, thank you.